Welcome back to the lecture series, Picture This, Looking at Signs and Symbols. This is part three, Pictorial Properties. This lecture is going to look at the different properties of a successful pictogram so that we can apply those same properties to our own designs. A pictogram is designed based on a number of cognitive properties that have been shown to contribute to human interface or human recognition of the pictogram. Those five properties are concreteness, complexity, semant uh, semantic distance, distinctiveness, and familiarity. So as you've probably assumed by all these very complex multisyllable words, there's been a lot of research done around uh, the human brain and image recognition. And so a lot of that learning comes into play in um, designing of visual signs and symbols. Because again, part of being a successful pictogram is that people can recognize it easily and understand it quickly. So this is kind of going a little bit deeper into how to make sure you achieve those things. All right, so we're gonna look at these five properties. The first one being concreteness. A pictogram is regarded as concrete if it depicts something physically resembling the real world. And so those that do not do so are considered abstract. So again, concreteness is it looks like something that actually exists in our world. And the opposite of concreteness would be abstractness, something that does not visually depict something in our world. So here are some examples of what we're talking about. So concrete pictograms would be something like the picture of the luggage for baggage check-in, picture of a taxi cab for taxi cab, and pictograms that are more abstract would be like the no entry sign or the parking sign because again those things do not actually exist in the world okay our next property is complexity so complexity or simplicity on the other end of the spectrum refers to how visually complex or simple a pictogram is is there are there more visual elements and more details that would make it more complex if there are less details and fewer visual elements it would be more simple so like i had mentioned earlier there's been a lot of studies done around um, signage and cognition like uh, you know user interface how people react to signs are able to perform tasks and that sort of thing um, so this property is a really good example of the importance of complexity or simplicity, depending on what your pictogram's use will be. So first we should just look at the three calculator examples below, right? So the one on the far left is the most complex. It has the most amount of details, the most visual elements within the calculator, right? All the numbers are there, there's a plus sign. If you look at the far right rendition of calculator, it is the most simple. It has the least amount of visual elements and it is you know, probably a little more abstract perhaps even. And then you have the one in the center, which is sort of you know, a little bit of both. You've got the plus sign and some numbers in the display screen, but the actual keypad numbers are still just black rectangles. So again, you're working on a spectrum and you're trying to decide as the designer, how much visual information do I need? Does my viewer or my user need to correctly identify this visual element and perform whatever task I need them to perform once they see it? All right, so in a study, it was discovered that simplicity reduces ambiguity and the user's mental workload. Search times were found to be faster for simple visuals as opposed to complex signs, meaning that visual complexity 
definitely should be considered where time critical reaction is important. Think like traffic, like knowing that there's a traffic light up ahead or a stop sign. Therefore, complexity versus simplicity is definitely considered to be a critical property in pictogram design. It was also found that between concreteness and complexity, which was the previous property, right, concreteness, the property of visual complexity is more important during a search task, but concreteness is more important in tasks where identifying the meaning or function of a pictogram is required. So what does that mean? Think about the difference in finding the correct flavor of soda at the drinking machine that you want versus slowing down for a traffic signal at a blind turn. So one of those tasks, picking your correct flavor of soda, you have more time to stand there and you're gonna need more visual details to figure out which one's root beer, which one's Coke, which one's orange soda, because it's not a time critical decision other than people are getting annoyed waiting for you to make your mind, your mind up. There's no you know, time critical aspect to this. But if you're driving down the road going 40 miles an hour, you need to know that as soon as you round this bend, you might have to slam on your brakes for a traffic signal, right? So in that instance, less visual detail is better because you need people to quickly see and understand and react to that visual sign. So that's what this is saying. So again, it's really important when you're designing that you understand who you're designing for and what is the purpose of what you're designing, right? I'm sure everyone's like traffic signal sign, not exciting, doesn't seem that complicated, but there were a lot of people doing a lot of research and making a lot of visual decisions to help users and to make sure that those signs are as effective as they could possibly be. Okay, our next principle is some, I can't look at the word and say it, semantic dis distance. <laughs> um, semantic distance is the measure of the relationship between what is depicted in the sign and what it's referring to. So the degree to which the pictogram matches with its function or meaning. So there, and this is again, it kind of goes back to that part one of this lecture, how there are three ways to represent an object. You could have a direct representation where the relationship between the pictogram and the thing it's depicting are immediate, like down below the example, fire extinguisher looks like what it's depicting. So that would be a direct relationship. Then you could have an indirect representation where the relationship between the pictogram and a thing it's referring to is suggested or associated, and I have uh, the information question mark, right? So think of this as like the abstract sort of column. So if you're looking for information, it's probably because you have a question. So there is definitely an indirect relationship between the visual of a question mark and the idea of looking for information. And then the third way is with arbitrary representation, or if you think back to part one, like non-representative. So arbitrary representation are associations that are completely arbitrarily established, like this exit sign, like the no entry sign, like the parking sign, right? So those relationships are non-representational. They have nothing to do with things found in actual nature in the real world. So their relationships have to be learned. So pictograms are definitely intended to represent familiar real objects. However, definitely limitations arise when there is a lack of a direct object to represent concepts. So in this case, the relationship between what is depicted in the pictogram and the function it represents is a lot weaker and the arbitrary relationship 
can only be understood if the users are familiar with the pictogram's meaning. So much more like a symbol, right? Their meaning has to be learned. Okay. Next is distinctiveness. So a distinctive sign can be less confusing than other signs, which would produce greater retention and help users to select the appropriate pictogram, again, from you know, a bunch of other images being shown to them. Right, so the more distinct it is, the easier people can recall what it looks like. In addition, users can respond more quickly to distinctive visuals. So as a designer, when you're developing a pictogram, it's important to determine which parts of an object cause effects of distinctiveness, aka what are the distinct elements of the thing you're depicting and to make sure that those distinct elements are clearly depicted in your visual. If you haven't done the keyword matrix part of the project yet, this is an ex keyword matrix is an example of creating distinctiveness um, where we're looking for the key visual traits that help a user identify what you're depicting. So the visuals in this slide are all types of transportation and they're all from the same set of Department of Transportation pictograms. All right, so of course you want all the visuals in your set to look cohesive. However, there has to be a level of distinctiveness so that people can identify taxi cab versus bus versus car versus train, right? So that's what this slide is really talking about. What are the key components of those different types of transportation? Um, and how do we make sure that we're depicting the distinctive elements within those modes of transportation so that a user can quickly look at these four visuals and understand maybe if they were in a transportation terminal and they were looking for taxis or the bus stop or the train where they're supposed to go okay so of course looking at these the taxi cab has the little taxi symbol on the top of the car the bus has like a longer elongated shape because buses are very tall right and the train has tracks underneath it to quickly tell you it's on rails not on wheels okay so again those might be subtle but they're subtle but they are distinct enough that you can quickly identify which type of transportation each image is depicting okay and our last one is familiarity Familiarity is defined in terms of the frequency with which a user is going to encounter that pictogram on a daily basis. So the tenant is based on the idea that users more easily recognize familiar visual stimuli than less familiar ones, right? So things you see all the time, you identify easier because you see them all the time. They're very familiar to you. Familiarity is an important property when the relationship between the pictogram and the thing it's depicting is arbitrary or indirect. Since this relationship can only be understood if you've had a previous knowledge of its meaning. Again, parking sign, information sign, maybe like a diaper changing station. These are all images, pictograms that have an indirect or an arbitrary relationship. But the more times you encounter those same visuals, the more familiar, familiar you are with them and you know what the visual is representing. So when designing pictograms, it's important to consider the familiarity your users will have with these visuals, if they will have any familiarity already, or if not, will these visuals be used frequently enough that the user will become familiar with the visuals and understand the relationships? So again, these three images at the bottom of the screen 
have all have indirect or arbitrary relationships. Um, it's hard to tell exactly what they're depicting, so they're definitely not representational. Um, there's like a really funny story or like a YouTube clip, you'll have to go find it, um, of Katie Couric and somebody, I think it's Brian Williams, uh, on a morning talk show, like on the Today Show, and it was back in like the early 90s where email addresses were a new thing, and Katie Kirk was trying to read out an email address to like for people to you know, get more information. And she had the at symbol was in the email address. And so she's just reading along the prompts and she gets to the at symbol and she doesn't know what it is. And it's like a really fun like flub or like her. And I think it's Brian Williams, whoever she's talking with, like they don't know what that symbol is, how to pronounce it, what it means. And it's 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 funny because you know, 15, 20 years later, or maybe more than that now, 20, 25 years later, um, we all know what the at symbol means. We know what it is. We know the name of the symbol. We know why it's used. And no one would ever stumble over that visual today because we are just so familiar with it. But when the internet was brand new and email was brand new, no one was familiar with this symbol and the relationship wasn't known yet. So go look that up. It's really funny. There you go, familiarity. All right, and that is the end of this lecture. Thank you so much.